All right, so what's going on, y'all? Another principle of minimum potential energy problem. I'm going to do A and B in this video. Um, we have to plot the total potential energy for variations in displacement of the free end of the spring. Um, and that's pretty much just going to determine the minimum potential energy. So when you apply a force, it's going to move a distance and it's going to stay there, obviously, right? Um, that's the minimum potential energy uh, with that force. Again, if you change the force, um, you're going to get different numbers. But in this specific scenario, uh, these two pounds, I mean, these two forces are a thousand pounds. And then uh, we also have to observe that displacement uh, yields the minimum potential energy, kind of like we expected. Um, but you'll see what I mean. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the goal for these problems, um, it's this right here, it's the minimum potential energy equation. So internal energy plus the external forces. Uh, Potential energy of the external forces so it doesn't say in the problem but this spring is a linear spring um, so I guess um just to be safe you assume it if they don't say um, non-linear so they'll probably um I think a 220 I did it in the other video um, it said non-linear spring so they'll tell you the relationship between force and displacement but for a linear spring this is what the load and displacement curve look like so it's x right force and that slope is a uh, k so this equation right here is force is equal to kx and to get the energy of the spring obviously right you just take the area under the curve so you integrate with respect to x your u will be one half kx squared and then your potential energy for the external forces acting on the spring is negative fx right okay so we got that um we got our u we got our omega so we can find pi p so let's go ahead and do step one pi p is equal to one half kx squared minus f of x right we could go ahead and plug in the numbers right so this is your force value right here um this is the positive x direction so um you could go ahead and plug in k everything's in pound and inches so we should be good um pi p is equal to 2000 divided by 2 so that is a thousand x squared minus a thousand x for your force right so that's pretty much <clears throat> we're not done but it's pretty easy to find uh the total potential energy equation all right so just by no well, not just by looking at it sorry um to know where the minimum potential energy occurs um you take the derivative and you set it equal to zero so you see here you play a thousand pounds right here at this node you pushing you're pushing it down right obviously and there's gonna come a obviously a moment where you're pushing with a thousand pounds and it's gonna be in equilibrium but that distance is gonna move right so we have to find that distance and you just do that by setting the derivative of this equation equal to zero so and that's where the minimum potential energy occurs what the problem is asking for uh, let's go ahead and the book does partial so we'll just keep it partial uh 2000x minus a thousand and you set that equal to zero so it's just like in calculus right you set the derivative um equal to zero and that kind of tells you your your slope or something like that i can't remember but it's pretty much the same thing so if you solve for x you will get 0 0.5 inches Okay, so that just tells you that when you apply a thousand pounds, <clears throat> this is gonna move 0 0.5 inches down and it's gonna stay there. That's uh that's kind of what it's saying. So we could um well actually no, we can't graph it yet. Let's go ahead and plug in this x here to find the value of that energy. So this tells us where it's gonna be in equilibrium, but it doesn't give us the value of energy unless you plug in at the 
original equation. So let's do pi p of 0 0.5 is equal to 1,000, right? We're just plugging in 0 0.5 for x squared minus 1,000 times 0 0.5. If you do that, this is going to be your first coordinate when we start graphing this thing. Um, this value is negative 250 pound times inch. So this is the answer technically. Um, this is kind of just what I told you. Um, <clears throat> so at uh, when we when this moves down 0 0.5 inches, the value of that minimum potential energy is going to be negative 250. And you kind of know this is going to be the negative because of calculus, right? Um, this is a parabola, and it's a positive 1,000, so that means your parabola is going to open upwards like that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and plot this thing. Um, it's pretty easy. What I like to do, um, the book does a lot of test points, but technically all you have to do is to get two other test points and two easy test points, just set this equation equal to zero. So pi p is equal to zero. And that is equal to, right, just the equation, 1,000x squared minus 1,000x. 0 is equal to, factor out of x, it's 1,000x minus 1,000. And x is going to be equal to 0. And x is going to be equal to 1 inch, right? So <clears throat> that gives us two test points. So this is your y coordinate and this is your x's. So let's go ahead and plot this. Make this look nice. All right, probably like that. It's cool. Um, so this coordinate right there is the main one. Uh, negative 250, so we're gonna plot pi p or energy with respect to x. So displacement versus potential energy, right? Um, 0 0.5 is the x coordinate and that's going to give us a negative 250 pounds so 250 pound inch right this is in pound times inch and this is just inch okay and this coordinate's going to be 0 0.5 so that means that's the the minimum potential energy right there we got zero zero and then one zero so we got zero zero right here and then we got one zero right there. So that's the, the graph right there. It's gonna be a parabola going up. I'm trying to make it the best I can. It's gonna go like that, right? Boom. And that's it, that's uh, that's the graph right there. Um, so it says observe that, dis uh, observe that the displacement uh yields the minimum potential energy so yeah it does right at 0 0.5 that is the minimum potential energy negative 250. so pretty straightforward right this was part a let's go ahead and do part b uh, it's pretty much the same thing nothing too crazy um uh, so same thing right positive x is going this way um our u is going to be equal to it's a linear spring it's, it's the same paragraph so it's a linear spring that's going to be one half kx squared omega is negative force times displacement uh, so that means pi p is equal to one half kx squared minus f of x minus f times x sorry so step one so that means pi p is going to be equal to plug in your k right 500 divided by 2, that's 250 x squared minus 1,000 x. Okay, so again, minimum potential energy occurs at uh, taking the derivative with respect to x and setting that equal to zero. So that's where minimum potential energy occurs. Again, that's just calculus, right? um do that you will get 500 x minus a thousand that means x is equal to two inches right that's where minimum potential energy occurs <clears throat> and again same thing 
Now you plug in this two into your original function to see that value of the minimum potential energy. So step three, right? Pi P uh, of two is equal to 250 times two squared minus a thousand uh, two, right? X, I was gonna put X, but uh, do the math. You will get pi P of two. Uh, that's going to equal to negative a thousand pounds times inches. Yeah, pound inch. So, like I said, this is the answer. This is where the minimum potential energy occurs. And again, I'll repeat it one more time. Um, just realize that uh, this is a parabola going up, right? It's a positive x squared. So, that means when you take the derivative, you're finding this one right here, this point. And this is the y coordinate, right? Because we're going to graph it. Let me go ahead and do the graph. Just make it look nice so you could understand what's going on. Uh, this is going to be pi p. <clears throat> and this is x displacement. So, negative 1,000. That's the minimum potential energy. And it occurs at 2 inches two inches all right uh like i said i like to get the the reason i set it equal to zero is because i know it's a parabola it's, it's going to open up and i know this is the lowest point right kind of just like what i told you right here so i just want to see where it crosses the x-axis so you just do that by setting the equation equal to zero right this one right here okay so we set that equal to zero pi p is equal to zero and that's equal to 250 x squared minus a thousand x zero is equal to x right we're going to factor it out minus a thousand so that means x is equal to zero and x is equal to four and again so it's going to be along the x-axis at x equals zero and x equals four right there so yeah that's it uh just graph it point it up <clears throat> not the best drawings i know but i guess just work with what we got uh that's the answer right there um i'm gonna do c and d just splitting it up just because but it's pretty much the same uh same process so if you know how to do these two try doing c and d on your own before you watch the video and uh you should be all right but there it's that's the top and there's the bottom for part B. And then this is the top for part A, bottom.